In this video, we're going to be diving into the topic of proximal Achilles tears or ruptures, or in other words, higher up Achilles tears or ruptures. So proximal just means further and closer to us, and distal means further away from us. So proximal, that area is normally around where our calf meets the top of our Achilles or our musculotendinous junction, which we'll talk about in a bit more detail. We'll go through what are these tears and ruptures, what sorts of signs and symptoms do we get from those, what should we do about it if we have that, and then how can we help you further. I'm Ali, I'm one of the physios from TreatMyAchilles.com. We're here offering an online service for all of your Achilles injury needs. We offer both assessment and treatment. If you're interested in what we can do or whether you'd like to book an appointment, please have a look in the description below. So when we're talking about tears or ruptures around that musculotendinous junction, there could be a few things that might have been injured. So we could be talking about a calf strain or a calf tear. And we could be talking about the Achilles itself, so a tendon, partial tear or a rupture. One of the more common calf tears around this area is called tennis leg. It's an injury where people are going from a deceleration to an acceleration type movement, which is not just common in tennis. You also might see it in sports where you have to change direction or push off and move. Um, and it can be something where we're doing that at force or it might be doing something where we've been stationary for a bit and then push off because it's ready to be our turn. It typically doesn't involve anyone else around us and can just happen. That tennis leg or that inside calf muscle is where we normally would feel that problem and that's the inside calf is called your medial gastrocnemius and where that comes down and inserts into the tendon area is typically where that tear might be. Now that's characterised by a push off and then you might feel a pop or you might hear an audible pop sensation and then there could be some sharp pain. Now that's quite tricky to distinguish between then is it my calf or is it my Achilles because if we go on to describe the symptoms you might get with an Achilles tear or rupture it's very similar. It's normally a sudden onset of pain, not the same as a tendonitis or a tendinopathy where something might have been grumbling around for a bit or you might have it in the background or sometimes there and sometimes not. This is a sudden onset. It also accompanies the feeling of like a popping sensation and quite commonly with an Achilles tear or rupture you also might hear or feel like somebody's kicked you in the back of the leg or a gunshot's gone off and other people around you might also hear that. Both of these injuries, the calf or the Achilles, can lend itself to losing that function immediately, so losing the ability to push off on your toes so sometimes with an Achilles rupture, in about a third of cases, you don't get any pain with that at all. Because if you think about what a rupture is, it's where your fibres are all nicely joined together and now they're not. So if I were then to try and push off and to try and walk, I've got nothing there that's going to cause me any pain or injury. Whereas if I had a partial tear or rupture where some of my fibres were together and some weren't, if I then try and push off and contract, I've still got something there and something that isn't, so it is more likely to be uncomfortable or painful. But remember that's only in a third of cases for an Achilles rupture. We're also looking at the lack of ability to start to walk on tiptoes, and that might be a sustained walking on tiptoes, so your heel's not dropping lower than the other side, or you might just not be able to do that at all. So we have loss of function and an audible pop or kick sensation. Again, in both of these injuries, it's now quite common for it to start swelling up and it might happen pretty quickly or it might take a few hours to start feeling like it's really quite swollen now. And it's typical to just swell around that whole calf Achilles ankle area. And if we were to leave it for a few more hours, we might start noticing some bruising coming out into the next day or two. And we also, over that time, feel some heat 
or some redness. So you can see it's quite difficult to work out whether it's the calf or the Achilles in this instance. Typically, an Achilles tendon and rupture, the most common, is in that lower part. So it's about four to six centimetres above from where it attaches into the heel. This is by far and large the most common. So it's unlikely, but does happen at that next point more common area which is that higher part of that Achilles so into that MTJ muscular tendinous junction area. So if you were to get one of these you might be where you're feeling your pain might give you a clue as it is it Achilles is it calf but really you're not going to know that information without getting medical help and it's this that we would strongly advocate that you do, because depending on your diagnosis now depends on what is going to be available for you for treatment or for what you must do next or even for how long it's going to take to recover. If you have well, your calf sprain or one of these tennis leg type injuries, what we're looking at there is that your calf and your muscle has a much greater blood supply than a tendon does. And that calf muscle therefore has more opportunity to heal on a quicker basis than a tendon does. And so, yes, in that first instance, we may need to keep it still and we mean to take our weight off it and we need to look after it, and we'll come on to that in a moment. But what you really need to do is get an assessment to find out, is it my calf or is it my Achilles? If it is your Achilles, you're looking more at trying to immobilise that for longer, and that might mean being in a boot, it might be in crutches, but in both instances, if you've immediately hurt yourself, keeping your foot in a slightly pointed position, so your heel higher than your toe, not weight bearing on it, so hopping, getting some support and getting yourself to see a medical professional ASAP to get that scan would be super important. Now let's say you've got your scan, your, if it is an Achilles they'll then put you on a pathway and normally you're then in a booted situation and it depends on how many fibres were affected to whether it's a partial tear, so some of it torn, or whether it's a full tear where all of that has been completely torn. If that's the case, it depends on the distance here between the two as to what options might be available to you, whether that's surgery or whether that's conservative management. So management with exercises and without a surgical um, procedure. You, We've got some really great videos that Mareka has done on this in the past. If you would like to have a look at those videos, please see the links below. So let's say you've now got your diagnosis and we're looking at more of this calf or tennis leg type injury. If that's the case, we've got it confirmed and we've been given the get-go to start doing some rehabilitation. Normally you would be coming away from having your foot in a pointed position quite quickly over the next week or two you would start to be able to do things where you start to move for a range of movement, but we wouldn't be overstretching. If you think about any tear, if you were to suddenly overstretch, you're taking those ends away from each other, which is the opposite of what we'd want to try and achieve. When we have our foot in a pointed down position, we are bringing the ends closer together so they have a better chance of knitting or a quicker chance of knitting together. So in the immediate few days from a calf tear, not from an Achilles problem, you're looking at trying to manage it from a swelling perspective. You equally could do this with an Achilles tendon problem, a rupture or um, partial tear, but you would want guidance from your consultant as to what to do next. With both for swelling, elevating your leg so your heel is higher than your knee, which is higher than your hip, and having that all on love, so lovely cushion so it's comfortable with your back supported is a really nice way of helping with swelling because it helps to drain that swelling back into your body so it goes into your system and gets flushed away. If you're in that position doing things like tightening your knee, wiggling your toes but not your foot, and having a go squeezing bottom muscles and relaxing can make muscles work a bit like a pump and that can send that away. 
please don't do any foot or ankle movements until you've got that cleared by a consultant to do so, particularly if it's an Achilles issue. You may also be booted and in that time that's offering a bit of compression which can help with swelling and they may have suggested some medication for you to also help with pain relief and to help those early days. Once that phase has settled, again if it's now an Achilles rupture or partial tear, please have a look at the other videos. If we're talking more about a calf, this is where we start to come in. We would be able to start looking at how you're moving, getting a bit more flexibility back into all of that area, looking at the rest of your body, starting to get you to walk and to move. Once you've got the clearance for rehabilitation for either injury, that's then when we start our rehabilitation. And that, again, will be found in the conservative or surgical management videos for Achilles. And for both of those, the general rule of thumb is we start with range of movement and light uh, working of those muscles. We start to make that a little bit more difficult with some body weight exercises and then using weights and resistance type exercises, which then in turn, once you've hit a threshold of how strong you are, we would then look at whether you're hopping, jumping, running, returning to sport to then at the top of that pyramid, get you back to sport again. With a calf tear or something like that tennis leg, you are looking for somewhere around 8 to 12 weeks to get you back on there. But please remember, everybody's different and started this process being at a different level. Some people are really fit and active. Some people have just got back into um, becoming fit and active and some people haven't done activity for a little while. It might be depending on age, depending on other things that are going on and to the extent that that was injured. So in general, if you have had any type of accident that's caused sharp, sudden pain, felt like a pop or a gunshot or a kick type sensation, got an immediate lack of function so you can't push off as easily on your toes, please stop, please gain attention straight away to find out what's going on. And then once you've got the clearance for some rehabilitation, then start to go on that pathway, which is something we can help you with. And you can always book an appointment and find out a little bit more about that in the description below. Please remember that the proximal Achilles tendon ruptures and tears are less common, far less common than the ones lower down but they still might be there and might present a muddled picture with possibly calf injury, or you might have a bit of both and it's worth getting that checked out.